My name is Keena Mullen and I'm a PhD candidate at North Carolina State University and I'm here today to talk to you about tail docking. So we'll talk a little bit about what exactly tail docking is and then go into some of the scientific evaluation of tail docking itself uh, and then look at what the consumer advocacy groups such as the Humane Society of the United States are saying about tail docking and then I'll give you some of my personal conclusions but those are definitely open to debate at the end. So tail docking is removal of the dorsal portion of the tail, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it. Uh, you can see here on the left we have a cow with an intact tail. You can see she also has the switch, which is the longer portion of the tail on, still at the end. And this is a tail dock cow. You can see her tail actually ends right here. And tail docking normally occurs between the sixth and seventh vertebra on the tail to give you an idea of the location of the docking. There are many different reasons for tail docking and it's done in many different species. Uh, for swine, they dock the tails because the, the pigs are very curious and they like to chew on each other. And so a tail is a very nice thing to chew on because it sticks out so far. Um, you can see this pig is actually trying to chew on the nubbin of the, the dock tail there. Tail docking is also done for cosmetic purposes, uh, such as in these dogs here. These are breed, sort of the breed standard to tail dock these animals. Tail docking is done in sheep to prevent something called fly strike. Fly strike is where uh, the tail actually collects manure and that attaches into the wool and then fl blowflies are attracted to that manure that's stuck in the wool and they lay their eggs in there and then the maggots start to eat through the flesh on the sheep. Uh, pretty gross. There's also some different surgeries they can do to eliminate the fleece on the backside of the sheep. Those are also controversial so we won't talk about those today. Uh, but we'll focus today on tail docking in dairy cattle. You can see a uh, this lamb here actually has its tail still, uh, which looks kind of funny because we're so used to seeing docked animals. So we're going to focus on, on tail docking in dairy cattle today, and the reasons for that are increased cleanliness with the thought of uh, without that switch, you don't get the manure in the tail switching up on the back and on the udder. There's also a uh, risk of disease transfer to the milkers themselves, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Tail docking is performed by using a knife or a scalpel, as you can see in this picture right here, or they could use a docking iron. And so you can see this, um, this iron right here. You plug it in and it cauterizes the wound right as it's chopped off. There's also banding that's used uh, on these lambs here. It's essentially a rubber band that tightens around the tail and blocks off the blood circulation, which actually makes the end of the tail become necrotic and eventually fall off, or it can be cut off depending on what the producer likes to do. The big thing about how tail docking is performed is that it's often performed without use of anesthesia or pain, any kind of pain medication. So the purpose of tail docking in dairy cattle is to actually prevent disease transfer, like I talked about earlier. Uh, the main disease that they were concerned about with this was leptospirosis. Uh, the thought was if an infected cow peed on her tail and that tail hit the worker in the face, then that worker might contract leptospirosis because it is a zoonotic disease. The other concern is worker comfort. As you can imagine, if you're standing in a parlor and there's a tail coming down, that tail could hit you in the face. So if you dock the tail, then you eliminate the part that would actually whack the milker in the face. This is especially a problem in the parallel style milking parlors. You see how all the, the cows are parallel to one another. So when this milker actually wants to put on the automated milking unit, they have to reach in between those cows' legs and possibly face a swishing tail in the middle, which may actually make the milker, uh, the milking unit dirty and also hit the milker in the face. So that's, that's where the milker comfort comes from. There really hasn't been much scientific evaluation of this though. And so utter cleanliness, as far as utter cleanliness goes, there's been a lot of evaluation of, of tail docking versus not tail docking. And they found that tail docking really does not improve utter cleanliness whatsoever. Actually, in one study in the United States, the udders were dirtier on the tail docked cows, uh, which is very interesting to see. Uh, you can see this cow. Well, you can't see any tail here, so I don't know if she's docked or not, but you can tell that she's uh, got some dirty niche issues there. So there's, you don't really need the tail to transfer the manure um, to the udder itself. As far as mastitis incidence goes, it wasn't any, any reduced from uh, between tail docked cattle and not tail docked cattle. 
As far as worker comfort goes, like I said before, there's not much evaluation of worker comfort. But the farmers that were polled in a study did perceive an improvement in the comfort and speed of milking. Uh, they, they felt like the milkers were more comfortable uh, because without the tail in the way, and then there's also, uh, they were milking faster. You can see in this picture, this milker is working in a rotary style parlor, so the, the cows are actually rotating around her, I think, maybe him. Um, and there's a study done in New Zealand that actually said that for each, each uh, rotation in the milking parlor, those workers were hit an average of twice. So it's a good thing to think about when you're thinking about parlor styles. Uh, there's the biggest issues with the rotary parlors and the parallel parlors with getting hit in the face with a tail. There are negative implications of tail docking. Uh, there are changes in behavior, especially with right after the cow has its tail chopped off, they tend to look at it and uh, play with it a little bit more. Uh, there's also physiological responses to tail docking. Some studies have shown increases in cortisol, which is a stress hormone, uh, but not all of them have, so it's not quite sure if that's related to the actual tail docking method or something else. Um, there have been quite a few studies about coping with flies, how the animals with their tails docked actually can't knock off the flies off the back of half of their body. And so there's more issues with uh, those cows having bunching behavior and other behaviors to try to get rid of those flies that they can no longer knock off. The other interesting possibility is uh, neuroma formation and increased sensitivity. So you have the, the possibility of increased sensitivity on that docked tail, but this neuroma formation is a tumor of nerve tissue. And so you can see one on a human finger right here, and it's basically all those nerves grow so that their nerve endings are, are facing outwards. And then that's very highly sensitive. And so if you, if you can imagine that on a, on a tail dot cow, that could be very, very painful depending on how hot or cold it is. And there's actually a surgery that's been developed for humans uh, where they reroute those nerve fibers that go outwards to go inwards. And so they don't feel quite as much. So there's definitely an issue of um, cow comfort here if they have some kind of uh, reaction to tail docking. And just another side note is when humans have this, this is often associated with um, amputee patients. So the, the phantom limb syndrome is actually caused by these neuromas. So tail docking is currently banned in New Zealand, Denmark, Germany, uh, Scotland, Sweden, the Netherlands, the UK, and three states in the United States, uh, California, Ohio, and Rhode Island. Some of those US bans have not quite come into place yet, but will be in the future. And there are many different groups that do not condone tail docking, um, including the European Union, several Canadian groups, uh, the Ma National Mastitis Producers Federation, which recently released another news release that said that they don't support tail docking, uh, as well as the National Mastitis Council and Dr. Temple Grandin. And so tail docking is either banned or discouraged in many different areas of the world. So I just did a Google search just to see what I would find on tail docking in dairy cattle. Um, and it was very alarming to see an HSUS report as a second hit, uh, welfare issues with tail docking of cows. This is a report issued by the HSUS uh, that I was actually pretty surprised about. They use a lot of really good scientific information when they did it. Um, actually, a lot of the sources that I used to make this presentation. And so their recommendation, ultimately, after reviewing all the literature, uh, was that you should trim the cow's tails. So in the springtime, you should trim them so they're out of the way, trim those switches off, and then let them grow back through the summer when the flies are there, and then you can trim them again in the wintertime. Uh, so if anyone has extra clippers and wants to go help trim some tails, I'd, I'm sure that the dairy farmers would love to do that. Um, there's another group called Liberation BC, which is a animal advocacy group in British Columbia, and they want tail locking banned. So in case you're not familiar with Humane Society of the United States, here's the, the head man here, Wayne Paisel, and he's definitely supportive of banning tail docking. I also looked through the popular press to see what I could find on tail docking. Uh, so Mother Earth News, which is a fairly uh, liberal sort of start your own backyard farming um, organization, says that treating dairy cows humanely involves banning tail docking. Wall Street Journal uh, reported on dairies actually stopping cow tail cutting, which is kind of a gruesome way to talk about tail docking. Um, there's 
several other articles with regards to actually uh, banning tail docking in Colorado. I like this cow tail, cow pie. Um, and then the House Committee did postpone the vote on tail docking bill in March after a heated testimony from uh, dairy farmers. So from all of that, sort of the take home messages that, that I want you to have is that there's really no scientific basis for tail docking. Um, and the, the so-called benefits of tail docking as far as, as uh, reducing the dirtiness of the udder are, have been repeatedly disproven. And the possible negative effects on cow well-being, think about those neuromas again, and the attention of the mainstream media on this topic suggests that we really should ban tail docking. And with that, here's some sources to look at, and thank you for your time. <laughs>